He's full HP, man. He's full HP and forces out Suzu and TP. How did he play this poorly? And he won the Sojin Jewel, right? Like, I don't know, man. It's just, yeah, I, I think people are unfairly giving Macho flack because he hasn't got good reputation rather than looking at the clip for what it really is. So future editing Keijo here, I wanted to put a disclaimer saying this is pretty much a self-reflection for the Overwatch community and a primarily a message to them. So people have already been talking about this over the last few days. I thought I'd chip in because I think I have some very important things to say that no one else has really brought up. One to do with actually fixing the issue at hand and the second to do with the double standard of the, of the Overwatch community. I'll get into that later but before that I just want to show this quick Metro clip to give some context if you haven't seen it already. Again this thing blew up on Twitter, 3 million views, only 3k likes and I'll get into that but yeah here we go. Yeah yeah. Me now. I dare you. It is so ridiculous that he can do that, right? He is oh, yeah. absolute shitter. See, if the Sojourn commits, right, he dies because it's fair. If the Kiri commits, she can just get out after missing everything. Is that was the perfect no, example? The, these last 20 seconds showed everything that's wrong in a while. Of course, down below, you have tons of people complaining about the actual clip itself. And genuinely, I think Metro, like I'm going to slightly critique Metro here, I'll defend him a lot later. But the framing of this tweet really is not that good. Yeah, here we go. Um, The comparison being made is the problem. The Sojourn plays it awfully, which is true, and I'll get into that. If the comment was just TP isn't fair, there wouldn't be a reason to refuse. Kiriko is definitely risking less, and her kit encourages this, but Sojourn's run it down risk or not, I don't disagree. And this is absolutely fair, I think this is really the only criticism of the actual clip, that the Sojourn played it really poorly, she slid in, she didn't need to, just play, just play the cover, play the corner, and then you can slide in or out depending on how the duel goes, right? Now, in terms of the actual clip itself, I... Sparlow made this video obviously, and I watched it, um, and I would, I agree with most of it, but in terms of, you know, the elephant in the room and what he's actually talking about, he says Metro plays it poorly, and I just have to disagree, so I'll play it here. Took chip damage from the Roadhog, he's- Ch Took chip damage from the Roadhog, okay. So let's, let's play it back a little bit here. The yeah, obvious and- So of course he's swinging a bit wide here, but he's still full HP, he's still full HP, he's playing this cover relatively well, I wouldn't say really poorly, yeah. right? In fact, he's still peaking now, and he's about 180, 190 HP, and still he's deep peaking the cover here, right? I don't think he's playing it really poorly. Sure, he could have stayed here from the big, from the get-go here, but I think, you know, again- The thing is that factors into that he's sitting on the floor. Sitting on the floor, where is, where else is he supposed to play, right? Like he- He's Soldier, right? He's, he's, he hasn't got Verscom mobility. He's not Soldier, he's not Hanzo, he's not Genji, right? Like, where else is he supposed to be playing, right? And in fairness, we didn't see the, the uh, prior bit to the clip here. We didn't see his actual flank. But, like, if I, zoom, if I speed it up here, I'll let him keep talking. Um, he's all the way in the enemy backline, but he's... All the way in the enemy backline. That's completely fine. Not even positioned very well for it. Not even positioned very well for it. Where else is he supposed to play? What up here? Right, so he was already here and he got forced out by the Kiriko on the hog and a decent cover usage, so he had to peel back because he was, he was getting 2v1'd. Up here he's got no LOS. The only other place he could really be playing is up on the little, um, the bridge thing, the connector between the spaceship and the Mega. But we then, again, we don't see that flank there, we don't see where he could have possibly been. And you could even argue to that, that it would have taken him too long to spin up those stairs to get to that position. Um, and again, this is still a good enough angle to force the Kiriko's attention, to force the Hog's attention, to force the Sojourn's attention, right, and actually end up winning that duel. I don't think this is a bad angle at all, really. He doesn't hit a particularly good helix off of the wall. He doesn't hit a particularly good helix. Well, the helix is plenty, and look at the Kiriko. It's all the way it's, in it's the enemy good backline, but he's not even... What, like, what other helix is he supposed to hit? Very well like, he ends up forcing the Kiriko's TP he here with the helix, a... right? Thanks to the helix. That did a good 60, 80 damage, right? And forced TP. That's good. Particularly good helix off of the wall climb. The Sojourn slides in with- And then he's with the Sojourn who slides in and feeds, right? So he's right about that. And he's right about the rest of this as well. Um, But I think Metro, again, why are people hating Metro for this? This is a genuinely like, he plays this fairly, he plays it fairly well. Like, I don't see why people are just hating him, hating him for it. Metro's framing was really not good here. The point that he should have tried to make is that the Kiriko is taking on significantly lesser risk than the Sojourn, right? Um, And then some people not saying, 
You spawn camp you on low ground, a soldier! And it's like, soldier's supposed to half rank, he's a sprinter, you know? He's a hybrid between Tracer and Cassidy, that's how he works. So the real meat and potatoes of what Sparrow talks about here in terms of like the systemic issues is the indirect versus direct value trade-off, right? Where Metro doesn't really realise or he's not very aware that what he's doing is actually getting a lot of value here. He's forcing out TP, he's forcing out Suzu, and he doesn't he's not really aware of it, right? He's expecting a kill, not a CD trade. And that's really key. And I've kind of alluded to this prior in terms of like it feeling fun to force CDs instead of getting kills in the, you know, the rock, paper, scissors kind of thing, the big bang sort of meme I had. Again, you can play Ryan versus Aree Sebastian. You can do it. In some maps and in some, some, some circumstances, you can absolutely do this. It is possible. Same thing with Winston against like a Reaper Torb comps. You can do it, but it's not fun. Right? It doesn't feel like you're getting valued by distracting three people and having the Reaper solely focus on you, right? It doesn't really feel like you're doing much on Ryan against Avi Sebastian or Winston against Torbjorn Bastion or Reaper, right? Same thing here. Metro doesn't feel like he's doing much against the Kiriko because he's not landing the kill. Again, on the flip side, right? Metro shouldn't be able to get the kill into the Kiriko 10 times out of 10. There's nuance to it, right? There's some grey area. And I'll talk about the solutions to it because I think this is an absolutely key issue that needs to be looked at. Whenever you're looking at something that jeopardizes the fun or fairness or perceived fairness, right? That's really, really key of a video game like Overwatch. A discussion needs to be had in terms of how to make it more fun or how to make the player perceive it more as it being a fair trade-off. And there's two solutions. The first one is to increase the reward of what Metro's doing, or increase the perceived reward of what Metro's doing. That's really, really key. Make Metro think that he's doing more than he's actually doing, right? And the second thing is to increase the risk. So how do you do the first option here? Well, it's kind of hard, right? The only thing I really thought of was add a voice line to where Soldier would say, I've forced Suzu, right? Or Suzu forced, or... TP forced, right? Something like that, where it positively reinforces the player, aka Metro in this situation, to, you know, understand and know that what he's doing is still good, is still getting value, right? That's really, really key. The counter argument to that, though, is that it doesn't change the reality, right? It doesn't change the reality that Metro still isn't getting the kill. It's not changing the reality that it still feels like Metro's doing nothing here, that he's getting outplayed by a Kiriko compared to a Sojin, right? Or compared to, like, whoever he's gonna be dueling next. The second thing though, the decreasing risk that Sparrow doesn't really talk about, um, there's so many things you can do that I haven't seen anybody talk about, right? First thing, add a cast time, right? Uh, that's a really bad colour there. Why not do the same thing to resurrect? That was done to resurrect, to add, to add a cast time. Do you guys remember like previous resurrect back in 2020, Moth Meta? Resurrect was instant, right? And now it's got like a cast time of like 1.7-ish seconds, I think, maybe close to two seconds. Force Kiriko to actually have good cover usage to be able to pull that TP off, right? Increase the risk to it, right? Have the animation be like, you know, she's slowly putting her hands together. Then when she puts her hands together, she TPs, right? Have it like that. Second fix is decrease the range. When you decrease the range, you're increasing the risk, right? Because now this Kiriko has to like make sure that she she has to be wary about the distance that she's playing with her team, right? Otherwise, she might be going too deep and it's too risky, right? That's really, really key. And it increases, you know, the, the amount of skill it requires, it increases skill expression because it means you've got greater spatial awareness, which is a skill, right, that players need to develop in order to be able to pull off plays like this, right? Third thing, increase the cooldown. Again, I've talked about this before in previous videos with the cost uh, versus reward ratio. And again, one or two of them have been cooldown related. So cooldown costs, right? And just increase this cooldown of, the, of TP or mechanics, right? And the way you increase the mechanics of TP is not have it be like a zone based thing um, or like, you know, have it very direct. You need to put your crosshair directly on your teammate, not in some kind of vague area, right? Which makes it more mechanically demanding, which increases the cost of TP, right? That's another fix you could do. But I think those first two, especially the cast time, haven't seen anyone brought that up before, not any creator, do that, right? Just such an easy fix. The second thing I talked about decreasing the range, I've been saying that for months, right? I'll play a clip here. I said it seven months ago in my eternal problem with the Overwatch 2 video, I said it. That means that if you nerf, say, the distance at which you can teleport from, or you increase the teleport cooldown, or you add a longer cast time, or you added some damage vulnerability effect after you had used the TP, it would impact the higher players without affecting the lower ranks, because lower rank Kirikos aren't using the teleport properly anyways. So that's really the main issue, right? It's about the direct versus indirect value that your hero's getting, and the cost versus reward ratio, or more specifically, the risk 
versus reward ratio, right? In Overwatch's history, we've never had an ability like TP before. We've had multiple escape abilities, like Moira's Fade, right? That's a good comparison to make. But Fade doesn't go through walls. The range, the distance on Fade is nowhere near that of TP, right? Same thing with Power Slide. Uh, what else? Echo Splite as well, right? These are all things that require LOS and don't have the distance that Kyoko's TP has. Escape options or escape cooldowns are very common in Overwatch, but they haven't got like this literally zero risk to TP, right? Like whenever you fade or you power slot or you flight, there's always risk to it. So you can still kill the hero during that ability, but with TP, no risk to it at all. Now here's where I get into the second part of the video where I talk about the double standard, right? And how people view Metro, how people view Spyro, how people view SVB, how people view me even, right? How people view different creators, and this is what really prompted this tweet, right? If you look at Metro's original tweet, 3 million views, 3k likes. If you look at my tweets, right, it's got a better like to view ratio here, right? People mad because Metro is right. If any other Overwatch creator, which they have, there's been multiple, make a similar tweet to this, they will not get as much backlash because they have better reputations than Metro, right? If we look at SVB tweet, for 5k likes, double the likes, and it's still got a great view ratio, right? And like a third, like a fifth of the views, right? And you could say that this is a better frame than what Metro had, because the SVB does mention the risk and, you know, why that's such a big key to this clip here. But he's also made a badly framed tweet before, right? A similar clip to this talking about the support, you know, OP drama, right? He posts this clip, which gets 2k likes, only 300k views, and sure, it did still get pushback if I view the quote tweets here. Confusion had this massive uh, quote tweet that popped off here that they critiqued SVB's clip, but still, this didn't pop off or cause as much drama as Metro, right? And why is that? It's because SVB is way more respected than Metro. And you can see people like SK enforcing the framing that Metro is putting onto it. She's not even giving any extra explanation. She's not saying, oh yeah, Metro's like not playing it well, or he's not talking about the risk versus reward, right? She's just straight up supporting Metro and look at the likes and the, and the views, right? And I think, again, you could argue that someone like, and again, you could argue that someone like SVB would never tweet something like this, but you know, there's a clear tweet of here that's, he does a similar tweet to it, right? Like, yeah, I'm just uneasy about it, and same with SK2, right? Similar tweets, and doesn't get nearly as much pushback. The real nuance of this isn't that you shouldn't respect or give more reputation to certain creators. Absolutely, you should give more respect to SVB or Spylo, I do the same thing too, than you should to like Metro or Samito or whoever, right? But the community really needs to look at the point for what it actually is, rather than looking at who made the points, right? That is so key. Like, there's better things to critique Metro for than this tweet. He plays this pretty well. He literally, he's full HP, man. He's full HP and forces out Suzu and TP. How did he play this poorly? And he won the Sojin Jewel, right? Like, I don't know, man. It's just, yeah, I, I think people are unfairly giving Metro flack because he hasn't got good reputation rather than looking at the clip for what it really is. Of course, I could look at my own rep in the community. And, you know, I think it's like a lukewarm kind of reputation. I think me making drama videos like the Yazan one, even the Red Shell one a while back has made me, has, you know, burned bridges with some creators, right? Like, they don't want to associate with me because they think I'm a brand risk or whatever, because I might make a video on them in the future, right? Like, I think that's a factor to it as well. And I think part of it is as well, like, people don't view me as, like, an actual content creator who can make good educational videos, right? Of course, I've got my guides, but I think people look at me as, like, a guide one trick and don't think that I can make actual good videos. Like, I made a Killbox video yesterday that I thought was actually, like, really, really good. No one cares. The watch time on it is awful. And I think that's partly because of how people view me in the community. But yeah, I had a lot to get off my chest there. Let me know your thoughts down below, and until next time.